hello everyone. Hello, brother. How are you, brother? Fine. Alex? Beautiful weather today. Here very nice. In, uh, it was Marshall. raining. It was raining a lot, but now it's beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's very nice. Very nice. And Good uh, boat day. The water is nice and calm. Very nice. Yes, happy Father's Day, Frank. Oh, thank you. Happy Father's Day to you too. You happy Father's much. Day to all the fathers out there. It's a good day to appreciate how much your children can teach you. Amen. You know, it's, uh, Amen. sometimes yes. you don't think. Sometimes you think that it's only parents teaching children yes. and, and raising them, but it's actually both way. You right. know, and you realize that once you become the father. Yes. Well, it's, a, it's a blessing, right? Once you have children, then you understand also. The, how our Heavenly Father sees us, you know, as His, his children. And, uh, but yes, children are a blessing, and we understand that not everyone is a father, and that's okay. It's okay, but uh, we want to talk about today, because it's Father's Day, I was thinking we could talk about God, our Father, our, our Heavenly Father, and, um, and His uh, character, and His attributes, and who He is. Because if we don't understand who our Father is in Heaven, then we're not going to get a full picture of who he is and if we don't know who he fully is then we can't really know how to please him and and what he expects of us uh, because you uh, see you know stickers God is love and all those things and we're gonna see that God is in love in fact but um, we need to see all of these attributes not just the fact that he is a loving God uh, but also that he has other attributes and we need to be aware that he is all of those things and so that's what we're going to talk about today and again, happy Father's Day to everyone. We're happy to be with you. And uh, from uh, beautiful Florida, it was not so beautiful uh, uh, an hour ago, but, um, <laughs> but it's nice right now. It's beautiful and it's really not cold, uh, really not hot. And because of the rain that we had, uh, it's not too hot. So enjoy the view behind us. And, uh, and uh, uh, if you lead us in prayer, then we can dive right into the Word of God. All right, thank you for us. let's do it. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for bringing us together over here in uh, this beautiful state, in this beautiful country. Thanks for everyone logging in to see the sermon. Hopefully the Holy Spirit will guide us in uh, the sermon. The Holy Spirit guide, you know, Brother Alex, um, in the sermon uh, on this beautiful Father's Day. Again, thank you, Heavenly Father, for everything. And, uh, you know, I, I, everybody prays differently, but whenever I pray, I try not to ask anything. I'm, I'm just trying to be grateful for everything Amen. everything Amen. I have, everything we have, and uh, uh, because you know, I believe that God gives us everything He gives us for a reason, Amen. and it is our responsibility, our personal responsibility, to do the best that we can uh, with it, because we do have the freedom of choice, we do have the free will, and we should exercise that free will uh, in order to please our Heavenly Father. So, thank you for this. And uh, thank you, Brother Alex, for the sermon. In uh, Jesus', Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother. And yes, we should have a heart of gratitude, right? The worst kind of heart is the heart that God does not like. He's a, uh, a heart that is not satisfied with what yeah. it has. Because we have received so much from God, the Father, and we've received salvation for free. For free. This is the only religion, the only faith that where you have nothing to do. It's all been done for yeah. you. I know it sounds weird and many people reject it because it's too easy, but you know, you can't work your way to heaven. Uh, in the Old Testament, in Isaiah, it says that if you try to work for your, by your way to heaven through your good deeds, it looks like to God, like a dirty, filthy rug with, with disgusting stuff on it. Uh, I'm not gonna get into details of what, what he describes, <laughs> but it's like coming on it, uh, we've got to God showing a filthy rug full of disgusting stuff on it and say, God, look all of the stuff I've done for you. And no, we cannot buy our way to heaven. God bought it for us on the cross through his precious blood. And we are to be grateful because we have everything and God is a good father. We're gonna look at, at his goodness. And he says in the Bible, if you ask your father for a, a, a bread, he's not gonna give you a rock, he's gonna give you Bread. How much more, if your earthly father loves you, uh, how much more does your heavenly father love you and will lavish his love on you? So that's the kind of love we have in, in God, is that he loves us so much more than our earthly father can love us. And this is important for many people who have not had, uh, who have not been blessed with a good earthly father. 
so many people. I was even talking yesterday to some friends, and they were telling me uh, that their earthly father is a is, is a loser, is a bomb, is is selfish, is egoistical, and has never given us them really what they need as children. But yet we realize that our heavenly father is not that. He's a right. good father, and so. A lot of people may be turned off by the idea of a, a father. Uh, also, a lot of people think, oh, father, so he's a male. No, God is a spirit. God is, you know, but he has attributes of the father. And of course, women too have attributes of, you know, uh, we're all created in God's image and we come together as men and women. Uh, we come as, as one, one, as one. God, so yes. Yeah. So God is one also in, you know, between the father, son, and the Holy Spirit. They're one. And, and the Holy Spirit has a little bit of the women, a little bit more of attributes of the Holy Spirit uh, as comforters and, and helpers, and you know. And uh, uh, but but the Father, we're going to look at today our Heavenly Father because the attributes, the character, we need to know His character and how we can inf and be better earthly fathers to our kids if we have children. Uh, because the more we understand of God and His character, the better we can be fathers to our own children. So let's dive into the Bible. Let's so do it. let's go first to First John chapter four. First John chapter four, and we're going to start at verse. Uh, let's start at verse seven. We'll go to to twelve, and then maybe we'll look at uh, verse uh, sixteen. So First uh, John chapter four, verse, uh, verses seven to twelve. Beloved. Let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent His only Son into the world, so that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and His love is perfected in us. Okay, let's read 16. Genesis 16. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love and whoever abides in love abides in God and God abides in Him. So God is love. God doesn't choose to love, like in Islam. Uh, in Islam, God chooses to love, but He doesn't have to love. He loves some, doesn't love others. No. God, in, es in His essence, is love. He cannot not love. Of course, everybody loves that. Even people who are anti-Christian, who are sinners, who are like people who, who hate God, they love the idea that, oh, cool, God loves me no matter what. Yeah. Well, this is the, uh, part of His character. Yes, God loves everyone. But each, I love here where Brother Way says that, you know, that he first loved us before we even loved him. We cannot even love him without his love for us first, pouring into, being poured into our hearts and all that because of the sacrifice of Jesus. God so loved the world that he sent his only son uh, to die for us that whoever shall believe in, uh, in him uh, shall have eternal life and not perish. So God demonstrates his love, it says here, in, his, in, in the fact that he sent his son for us. That's a demonstration of his love. When we, Romans 5 says, while we were sinners, while we were his enemies, he loved us and sent his son to die for us while we were his enemies. So he loved us first. So because he loved us first, we ought to love one another. Because he has loved us when we're not lovable, when we're really not lovable, he loved us, therefore we ought to love one another. Even if, if sometimes, you know, brothers and sisters or whomever can upset us and, and let us down, we ought to love him uh, because God loved us, because we let him down all the time. So God is love and his love endures forever and he demonstrates his love in that. And then lo later on in that chapter, it talks about perfect love casts out fear. So if you have perfect love, the love of a father, you cannot have any fear. No fear of man, you know, um, and. Um, you, 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 you're not fearful of dying because he has purchased you through his precious blood. You're going to be with, her, with him forever. So he loves us so, so much that we shouldn't be fearful, have a fear of death. I don't know how people without Jesus can live, you know? This fear of, of in one day all of us will die and we'll have to face Jesus. And, uh, but we, perfect love casts out fear and that perfect love was demonstrated in, in God sending his son to die for us. Propitiation just means the payment for our sin 
that was paid through the blood of Jesus. That's what it is. Propitiation is that he uh, he was paid for the, whatever we need to the punishment we deserve was paid was met uh, through the blood of Jesus. So that's that's the the um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the the love of God. God is love, and He cannot not love us. That's one of the attributes of God is that He is love, and that is so precious to know that we are loved, even if we are hated by men. Uh, rejected by our families to know that we have that love from God who loved us and loved us no matter what you know when yeah. we fall when we you know he picks us up it's so beautiful uh, let's look at Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 and 5 Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 and 5 we're gonna look at the how merciful our God is he is merciful of course if he's loving then all of these things will flow we're gonna look at mer uh, how merciful he is how compassionate he is how kind and all that but Let's look at that verse, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Amen. So God is grace, gracious. God is merciful. And, and, and again, He tells us that because He loves us, he again, he, he sent His Son Jesus to die for us and all He wants us is to accept that gift and so many people are seeking for for, 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 for meaning and purpose and happiness and all those things in the wrong places and, and God says come to me, come to Jesus yeah, but and you'll have all of it. It's interesting to see why people are always searching for meaning Yes, because they have everybody has the Spirit inside of them. Amen. It's just not everybody's following the Spirit that shows them that this is where the meaning, this is where the purpose is. Yes. But we tend to deny it. We try to find it in all the other, in all the other places. Things that make yes. Us sense. God created us here, amen, in His image. And we, in, our, in ourselves, we're seeking, we're there to seek uh, eternal life, we're there to seek meaning and purpose and all those things. But we're wrong, looking in the wrong places because we're tapping into wrong spirits sometimes. You know, the spiritual world is not just one spiritual world. We teach this. Oh, it's one spiritual world and it's all good and whatever works for you and it's fine, whatever finds, you know, you wait. No, if you tap into the wrong spiritual world, you'll get into the demonic world and then you open some really bad doors. Uh, so God has opened the door to heaven, kingdom of God, that we can tap into only through the blood of Jesus. It, it seems like it's, uh, it's a, 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 why is it only one way out? So why is Jesus only one way? Well, because if you understand your nature, and then you understand God's nature, then you understand that we are lost and we need uh, payment and we cannot save ourselves. So let's look at uh, Lamentations in the Old Testament. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. And we'll look at... Uh, chapter 2? Two? 2, yeah, verses 2 and 3. And uh, uh, for, for 22 and 23. 22, 22 and 23. And 23. We're going to look at uh, God's uh, faithfulness and how compassionate. He's faithful and compassionate. You summoned as if to a festival day my terrors on every side and on the day of the anger of the Lord no one escaped or survived those whom I held and raised my enemy destroyed is that the right verse that I'm reading? chapter, chapter 2, two. Hmm. Verse? chapter 3 I'm sorry chapter 3 okay yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was yeah. Thinking that's his wrath too you know he is a God judge chapter 3 chapter 3 22, 22, 23. 23 sorry right. yeah, no yeah. worries okay chapter 2 chapter 3 all right there you go the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Yeah, well, there's even a song called Great is Your Faithfulness. It's a beautiful song. I wish we would sing it one day. We'll sing it. Uh, but yes, how he's loving and merciful and compassionate, you know, and he's faithful. God, our God is faithful. Sometimes we, we feel like God is not faithful, like when things happen in our lives, we're like, God, why? I thought you were, you know, uh, and then many people who don't know the character of God may give up on the idea of God being faithful. Well, you know, maybe because I messed up for 20 years ago, maybe when I did this, maybe God gave up on me. You know, it's not, no, God is faithful to the end. He's seeking you. He's trying to bring you to himself. So do not ever doubt God's faithfulness. He is faithful. When you suffer, he's, he's, he's there. He's always there, you know, for, for, uh, uh, we just need to come to Him and, and trust Him with our lives. He is faithful to us, no matter what our circumstances. He is a faithful, faithful God. Let's look at uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Uh, we're going to look at God's 
he is forgiving also because sometimes we have a hard time forgiving others and we have a hard time forgiving even ourselves. I know so many people who really, uh, you know, their hearts are ready for forgiveness, but they have a hard time forgiving themselves. Yeah. And but God is a forgiving God. He wants to forgive us, and He has done it through on the cross. So let's look at First John chapter one verse nine and, and see God's forgiveness. How forgiving He is. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness from all unrighteousness all of it just because we messed up we screwed up all of us all of us we've messed up you know i did something two weeks ago silly i'm not even gonna share it it's so silly but i had a hard time you know forgiving myself because i lost my temper and i'm like i have such a hard time i just need to let it go you know okay i need to confess to god if i did something wrong and just come to god clean and say god you know Okay, I, the flesh, you know, uh, the, Jesus says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We are weak in the flesh, but God is quick to forgive us. He is a forgiver. He, if we confess our sins, He is faithful. Again, faithfulness. Yeah. He is faithful. And if He says so, if God's word says so, he's, it is true. You better take it to the bank. He is forgiving. He loves us. And He will be faithful. And He will be quick at forgiving us and to cleanse us of our unrighteousness. All He's looking for is a pure heart to come to Jesus and say, Jesus, I confess my sin, I have messed up, I should, I've done things I shouldn't have done, I've said things I, I've, I shouldn't have said, but God is quick to forgive us. And so in the same way that we, that God is perfect and holy and forgiving and faithful, we need to show that, demonstrate that to our children. Yes. Same way, you know, that they need to feel comfortable coming to us and say, Daddy, you know, I'm sorry, you know, this is what I did. And we should be quick at forgiving them if they're genuine and say, okay, good, thank you for telling me that let's not do it again you know blah blah and so that they can learn from us about the father through us we can see our heavenly father and they can they can they can know what kind of character our god you know he, what, what he has um, let's look at psalms psalm 136 1 chapter 136 verse 1 psalm 136 1 and we're going to see about god's goodness he is a good god you know, so many times we think that God is not good because we, human beings, are not good. Uh, we're, we can do good, we sometimes do good, but we can see also the evil around the, the yeah. world. A lot of evil people, right? So somehow we project this image to God. Mm -hmm. As I see God, eh, God is good sometimes, it's you know, evil sometimes. Look, all the evil in the world, eh, God must be evil therefore, right? We don't talk about personal responsibility, free will, that we are the ones messing up. But God is good, is faithful, and all these attributes. Let's look at His goodness. Psalm 136, 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. Yes, His steadfastness. He is true. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, the Bible says. His steadfastness. That means He doesn't change. He's always the same. And He was good yesterday, He's good today, and He'll be good tomorrow. He's always good. Our children need to see that goodness. Not that we are perfect, but our children need to know that we are good. And when they know that we are good, they know that they can come to us, trust us, and that we will always try to lead them in the right direction, right? right? Mm -hmm. That we're not going to lead them astray and uh, trick them yeah. and show them something that's evil for them. No, we love them. And again, in the Bible, Jesus says, you know, if you ask your father of bread, he's not going to give you a rock. Well, in the same manner, your heavenly father loves you even more. So he's good. He wants to lavish his goodness on you. He wants a relationship with you and he wants you to, to be well. Mm -hmm. Be well. Even if circumstances may still be bad, he wants you inside to be well, to be at peace and joy and all these you know, all these fruits of a spirit uh, that are inside. You can have all the happiness on the outside and be empty on the inside. God wants you to be filled inside your heart. Now let's look at uh, First Chronicles in the Old Testament, chapter 29. Verses 11, 12. Now we're going to show how powerful God is. Because again, we think of God sometimes His power being li uh, uh, having limits. How many times I've heard people say, "Well, God doesn't care about my problems. He's got bigger problems to deal with," as if somehow God is not powerful enough to deal with everything. Yeah. God can deal with everything and anything. He's so powerful, He can just speak into existence and it will happen. Yeah. So let's look at First uh, Chronicles chapter 29, verses 11 and 12 talking about God's power. 
Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and mind, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Amen. That's how powerful God Power is so powerful. So don't ever think that God is weak that God cannot do something. God is so powerful, it can change anything, any circumstances. He's changed mine from a heart that was of, uh, uh, of, of, uh, of stone and changed it to a heart of flesh, that the promise in the Bible. He transformed me and, and, and He can do that with anyone. And God is powerful, He has power. We attribute so much to man. All oh, this power, this person is so powerful, yeah. it's so powerful, there's nothing like it. No, God is more, much more powerful than any puny man on earth. And He is powerful, He is loving, He is caring, His majesty, His glory, all these attributes there are of, of His character are spoken in that verse, that God is so powerful. So don't ever minimize the power of God. Just because there's evil in the world, just because things are happening in your life, don't ever uh, uh, doubt the greatness of our God and how powerful He is powerful and He is sovereign. Let's go to Psalm 103, 19. Psalm 103, 19, talking about God's sovereignty, how He's sovereign over everything. God, somehow again, we feel like God, because He's not powerful, well, He's out of control. You know, yeah. this, the world has taken over God and God is just like, oh my goodness, what's going on here? It's out of control, I have no more control over anything. No, and make no mistake about it, God is in, in control of Amen. things. The Lord has established His throne in the heavens and His kingdom rules over all. Amen. Yeah, He is in power, His, His kingdom rules over all, you know, but again, God allows sin, he allows freedom of will, you know, uh, free will, and that's what we see all the evil. I mean, if he did not allow it, yes. then we wouldn't have the free will. Exactly. That's the whole essence of the free will. Exactly. So, some people are, uh, claim that, you know, it would be better for us not to be, have a free will, that way there would be no evil. But again, most of you watching, answer this question. Would you rather live in a country that is free, and have a freedom to do good or bad, or would you rather live in an Islamic state where you can never choose evil, right? You have a gun on your on your on your head, uh, or a dictatorship. We have left dictatorships. We don't want the dictatorships, and most people in the world want to come to a free country, right? Yeah. Why? Because they love freedom. But with freedom means freedom to do wrong. Yep. Responsibility, personal responsibility, freedom of choice. Yep. Right. So, but most people, I mean, 99.9% .9 of people would want, rather have freedom with the consequences of, of freedom and you see in society like America some messed up stuff, really messed up stuff, right? Some messed up uh, things, you know, with trans transgenderism and all things. you have, you have the freedom to do things. evil. Evil. And be freedom. evil and yes. spread evil and this is what we see, this is exactly what we see. Yes, and I understand that some countries that the dictators, you know, including like in, in, in uh, Putin, when he looks at the West, he says, you know, you know he talks to his people, is that what you want? Where, where boys become girls and girls become boys, man. Yeah. But still, we live in a free society, and this is the same way. God is good, God is in control, but He, he gives us freedom to do good. And, uh, and so, we, when we love our children, we teach them right, we give them the right essence, you know, the right uh, mor morals, but then eventually they're going to be on their own. Yeah. They're going to have to choose for themselves, right? And we can't stop them. Once they're, if we truly love them, we're going to give them that freedom to choose good or evil. And that's the same way as our Heavenly Father. I, you know, I'm, I don't know about you, but I, I, don't, I don't want to be married and, and have a gun on, on, on my wife's uh, head <laughs> and say, you know what, you can't leave. You know, I, I'd rather have somebody be with me because they truly love me yeah. and because they want to be with me. That's true love, you know. It's not, uh, you know, the end doesn't justify the means. Yeah. So that's well, God is sovereign and He is caring. We'll look at in, in Matthew chapter 6. Verse 26, we can look through all of uh, Matthew 6, we can read it, but how caring God is. Let's look in just one verse because uh, I want to wrap it up. Well, I don't want to keep you here forever. I appreciate you watching, but I want you to see how caring our God. Our God cares so much about us. You know, He is not a cold God. He's not this mean, 
man in heaven with a beard. See, we we <laughs> we make God in our own image. But that's because flesh, you know, know flesh has to justify and come up with flesh. Yes, yes, and that's why you know the Greek gods, all that, they were all made yeah, in, 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 in human's image, you yeah. know, beard and all that. God is a spirit; he's not human. Yes, he come into flesh in Jesus, but he's not; he's a spirit. But God cares for us. He cares, and he's not a cold God that can't wait to punish us. No, he's a good God. Let's look at Matthew chapter six, verse twenty-six. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? See? Yeah. If God takes care, and then it's a whole chapter showing about how much God cares. If God can take care of the birds of the air yeah. and find food for them, you think he doesn't care about us? He cares about us so much, and he will provide for us, you know? And to know that, I mean, when I didn't have God, I was a stress ball. Stress ball. I was scared. I was scared of dying, so I didn't want to go to sleep. I was scared of not making money. I was scared of. I was scared of everything, you know. But when you know you, your father cares for you, he will provide all the things that you need, and whatever you need, God will meet you. And uh, sure, you may still have some issues because of the evil around yeah. us, you know. I mean, but the peace yeah, that he gives you is, you know. And like, like I said, I know people who have, have it all. They have everything, all the possessions, rich and everything, but they don't have God, and they're miserable. And you see Hollywood. Hollywood, they have fame and money, and yeah. all, they have everything they want, and yet they're depressed. Yeah. Explain that to me. Yeah, drugs, right? alcohol. Drugs, alcohol. They, they, they're trying to escape, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to look at a few more because there's so much out there. Uh, let's look at Philippians chapter four, verse 19. We're going to see how God is a provider. We provide to our children because we love our children. God is a provider to us. And my God will supply every need of yours yes. according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. He will provide all of our needs, you know, in yeah. Christ Jesus. When we are in Christ, he will take care of all of our needs. We don't have to worry. He will take care of all of our needs, you know. And he just loves us, provides for us, and he's a caring father, caring, caring father. We care about our children. We provide for our children, right? We take care of them, whether they're good or bad. We just love them. We care. How much more does God care and provide for us? And uh, so we, we, that's our role as fathers here on earth to provide for our children. You provide for children, I provide for my child. You know, our Heavenly Father is the greatest provider of all. He loves us and provides for us. He cares for us. Um, but uh, let's look at a few more things because we can't look at everything. But let's look at uh, Psalm 145, 17. Uh, how God is righteous, He's holy. We forget that. We love the part God is love, but we forget that how good and righteous and holy He is. He is righteous and His righteousness endures forever, but we must know that He is our perfect standard. Humanity is not our standard. Um, Hitler is not my standard, you know, and it used to be when, when I was not a Christian, and therefore I was a good person. Hey, look, I'm not Hitler. Well, what a great standard huh, to live by, yeah, huh? right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and but you can we can choose whatever standards we yeah. want. But when our standard becomes Jesus, becomes God, our heavenly Father, uh, then the bar is very high, yeah. and we know we fall short. Not we should, not that we would feel guilty all the time, but rather we know that we need the that's Savior. That's how most people are. I know. Yeah. Well, I didn't kill anyone. I, I, know. I know. Good for you. Good for you. Oh, I'm glad you did. Yeah, good for you. But you're still a sinner. <laughs> you still need Jesus. So, yes, let's look at that. The Lord is righteous in all his ways yes. and kind in all his works. Amen. He's righteous and kind in all his ways. He's righteous and the, and the Bible says his righteousness it endures forever. Uh, and then he is our savior. You know, he is our savior. Uh, let's look at Zephaniah. Z E P H A. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Chapter 3, verse 17. That he is our, you know, he's our shepherd. He cares about his sheep like a good shepherd the Bible says we're not going to go into that but like a good shepherd takes care of his sheep you know the shepherd in the Old Testament is God in the New Testament is Jesus yeah. he is the shepherd and even though we're scattered he cares and he cares about that one that one that goes astray he just seeks it he wants to get it back that's how much he loves us that when we go astray he seeks us go. yeah actually uh, if you want to learn more about that yeah. we have from brother Sam Shamoon oh yeah that's right it's on our YouTube channel right. it's uploaded the video uh, it's called is Jesus God? That's that's a part, and okay. uh, there's a very good explanation from Sam good, over good, there. On good, the good. All right, Zephaniah. Yeah. Uh, Zeph Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Chapter three, verse seventeen. Yes. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. 
he will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. Amen. Amen. And then let's go to Acts chapter 4 verse 12. And then, then we'll go look, look. There's so many, so many attributes of the character of God, but we're going to go look at one more uh, because we need to understand once we're his, when his children, he also will discipline us. Because the same way we discipline our children, not because we hate them, yeah, because but because we, we love, love them. them. We love them the same way our Heavenly Father disciplines us. And we'll look at that. As, uh, but let's look at Acts chapter 4, verse 12. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Yeah. And talking about Jesus. That's Separate. talking about Jesus. Yeah. Yep. He is our Savior. In the Old Testament, the Savior was God, the Father, and God alone. And in, in the New Testament, Jesus is the Savior. He's also the judge. You know, well, he is the judge. In the Old Testament, of course, God is the judge. In the New Testament, Jesus. Uh, he says, it's, Jesus says, uh, even you know, uh, the Father was not giving judgment. He has given it to the Son to judge yeah. all men. So he is our judge. He is our thing. But let's look at one more verse, one more passage, Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to go from verse 4 to 11. Listen carefully, because when you become a child of God, it's the greatest thing in the world. You become a child of God. You accept Jesus in your heart. He comes in your heart. The Holy Spirit starts transforming you, give you His peace, and then you are in a relationship with Jesus, which is the most incredible gift. that We can be in a personal relationship with God. But once you are in, then there's a higher standard yeah. because you know better. Yeah. Now, now you have a Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and God disciplines those He loves. Let's read Hebrews chapter 12, verses 4 to 11. Listen carefully, and we'll end it with that. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by Him. For the Lord disciplines the one He loves and chastises every son whom He receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline. If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had early fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of Spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. I'm going to take a screenshot of this because I love this. It's beautiful. So, well, one of my things that keeps me going most of the times is the discipline. discipline. And this just is very... It's good, huh? Yeah, it's but good. he says he, he disciplines those he loves. But why? Because even though it says he may hurt for a while, you know, a little spanking once in a while, a little pruning, a little, you know, the Bible talks about pruning. When you prune, you know, it hurts, you know, yeah. or, or even put, being put through the fire. But why? Because nothing is wasted, you know. The reason I'm sitting here is because of all the suffering I went through, you know, in my life. And I thank God for it. Amen. We have a brother who's suffering right now, and he thanks God for it because he's brought him closer to relationship with Jesus, yep. you know. It's hard. Suffering is not fun. Nobody wants to be put through fire, right? It's not fun. No. But then when you come out of it, you're a better person, yeah. right? You're a better person. And so God disciplines those He loves. And that chapter is very important. He says, if He doesn't discipline you when you're doing wrong, you're illegitimate. That means you're not His child. You're not His child. You're someone else's child. And if you're not God's child, you're a child of the devil. But if once you're a child of God, you are in relationship with Jesus, then He's going to hold you to a higher standard because He loves you. I discipline my child. I don't go to the neighbor's house and discipline my neighbor's uh, kids, you know? <laughs> I wish I did sometimes, but I don't. But I discipline my children. I don't discipline your children. That's your job to discipline your children. Yeah. It's my job to discipline mine, right? And yeah. so, so with God, once you're in relationship with Him, once you become sons of a father, once you become a child, adopted child of your father, then you are disciplined by God, not because He hates you, but because He loves you. And if you have children, you know all too well. Or if you're a child, and guess what? You are a child, somebody uh, gave you birth, and you had good parents, decent parents, they disciplined you because they loved you. Yeah. They loved you. 
you know, and, and I know Americans have been saying um, of their, their dads, you know, when the dad spank them, and they have been saying, say, son, it's gonna hurt me much more than it's gonna hurt you. <laughs> and my son's like, I doubt it, dad. <laughs> so, so, but it's, you know, God loves us, and if it here, it says how he disciplines us, because he loves us. So, we have a father who loves us, a father who's gracious, a father who disciplines us, a father who's, um, who is um, good, who's loving, who's caring, but also who's holy and righteous. And because he wants us to become more and more holy and righteous, just like him, he will discipline us so that we can become more in the image of Christ. And every day, you're far from being Christ, I'm far from being like Christ, you know? But we, if we love Jesus, Jesus says, if you love me, you obey my commands. If you love me, you know, the idea is to become more like Jesus. And the only way we can become more like Jesus is if God disciplines us and prunes us and puts us through fire so that we can be um, made more in the image of God. So, happy Father's Day to all of you. Happy Father's Day, brother. Happy, happy Father's, Father's Day. Day to all of you. And we love you guys. And, uh, and thank you for your friendship and for watching. And we wish you happy Father's Day. I don't know if it's Father's Day in, in many countries around the world, but if it's not, if you need, even some countries don't celebrate it, happy Father's Day anyway, because it is, we need to recognize fathers for doing a good job, recognize mothers for doing a good job, and today happens to be Father's Day, and we're the greatest father of all. When you come to relationship with Jesus, we have a Heavenly Father who loves us, who cares for us, and who will lavish His love on us, and give us everything we need, and keep away everything we don't need. That's right. So God bless you all and thank you brother. God bless and, you brother. Uh, yeah, have a great week. Thank you. Okay. See you guys. Love you guys.